G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. It's time to continue on with our journey on learning how to play Twilight. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to film each of these segments and then post them straight away or do a whole series like I did for Tribal. You know, I did 10 videos and then uploaded them all at the same time so you could just, you know, watch them one after the other. Or if I should do them, you know, as I make them. I'm kind of tempted to just do this video and put it up and then film the next part and put it up because um, that way, you know, it keeps me going in terms of producing the video content rather than, you know, not putting anything up for, you know, three, four, five, six days, seven days and just going uh, and falling back into that slump that I seem to fall into every time I get inside of about posting videos, you know, just, you know, there's a flurry of activity and then it stops. So I'm probably gonna, we'll, we'll film this, we'll edit it. I'll probably put it up. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Anyway, what's the first part of learning how to play Tribal? I've done the rule book. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely looking rule book. I've been through what we need to play the game. Now it's time to start learning how it actually plays. So I've got a few things out here on the table. I've got some Divanu, sadly unpainted, um, some Grishak and their Genta Handler, and an Aurel Knight and his two Graku. Now, the game forces, all the forces have points. Um, I might go through, you know, putting those together in a, in a, a different video. It's not really necessary. I don't think if you're gonna play 100 points, look through the rule book and go, you know, that one costs 25 points. For example, the Aurel Knight costs 25 points and both of the Gruck were 15 points each. So what's that, 30, 55 points? And the Genta Handlers over here, he's 50 points by himself. So if you watch my previous video where I was talking about the Divanu, they cost a lot more because they're much, much better. This whole Aurel Force costs 55 points and just this Genta Handler is 50 points by himself. And each of these Gruku are 25 points each. So you get a 100 point force here versus a 55 point force here. It's not gonna be a balanced game, but that's, you know, that's not the point. All right, so how does the game play? So you need a dice bag and counters. Now I've only got a handful of counters here for the purposes of this demonstration, but in a normal game, you'll have six counters for each player. All of these counters, including these two red combat counters, go into the dice bag. And then we shuffle them up and then we pick who's gonna go first. So in this case, the yellow one are these guys. They would select a character, let's say for example, they wanted to move this knight, do something with him and move it. Then we go to the next player. It's a combat stone. So when we draw out a red counter, it means a round of combat actually occurs. The way that combat happens, and we'll see this in subsequent videos down the track, there's only two way combats happen. One, as part of special abilities that your character has that allows him to perform combat during his activation, or when one of these red combat counters come out of, in, of the bag. If these characters were in base-to-base -base contact, anyone who is engaged when a combat stone is drawn can fight. Anyway, I don't wanna jump into it too much. So that guy goes, then there's a, a combat phase, then we draw another counter, these guys get to do something, and this Grishak's gonna move up here, then we draw another counter, it's these guys again, this Grishak's gonna move up to support his friend, and second combat counter. Now we fight a round of combat. As soon as that second combat stone comes out, the turn is ended. It doesn't matter how many um, tokens are left in this bag. That's the end of the turn. We check for victory conditions and we move on with the next turn. So that's the, the sequence of play. We go back and forward, back and forward, um, pulling tokens out of the bag until either all the tokens are gone or two red counters come out, um, or both the red counters. There are only ever two if both of them have come out of the bag. Then the turn ends and a new one begins. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. When I activate a character, let's say that's a combat stone, no combats can be fought. Okay, so let's say the uh, Divanu we're gonna activate. Everybody has different sorts of abilities on their card, some of which can be used during combat, some that can be used when the unit is activated, some of them are leadership abilities, some of them are, uh, uh, you know, constantly always on traits, I think they call it, they're called traits. Special? I can't remember. I'll look it up in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna move this Genta Handler. Now each character has a statistic. In this case, his movement value is eight, so he can move up to eight inches. Just like a normal war game, you know, measure front to back. Um, he can move eight inches. There's only two types of moving in the game. Your movement stat or moving cautiously. Moving cautiously is half of your movement stat. And it's only ever used, let's say for example, I wanted to move this uh, Genta Handler 
into this little paddock here. He's got to cross a linear obstacle. So anytime you move through dangerous terrain or difficult terrain um, over a lin linear obstacle, or, or over a linear, or excuse me, anytime you move through difficult terrain or over a linear obstacle, or uh, I don't understand why there's two different things here, obstacle and linear. Um, I guess an obstacle can be something that you can't pass over, like a house or a boulder or a rock or something like that. Anyway, they're the three circumstances. Oh, fourth, sorry, if you want to disengage from an enemy, you need to move cautiously. So if I want to move through this difficult terrain or over this linear obstacle, I need to declare that I'm going to move cautiously, which is basically half of my stat. And I do that for the whole of my movement. So that'd be four inches to here. I wouldn't say, okay, well, it's two inches up to the fence. I had a movement stat of eight minus two is six inches and then half of six is, okay, so I can go an extra three. No, giving me a total movement of five in that example. No, it's a, your total move. If I wanna move through difficult terrain or over an obstacle or something, I need to say I'm gonna move cautiously and I half my movement stat and then move my four inches, which would take me into that little uh, pigsty or you know whatever, little paddock or <laughs> whatever is there on the table. Um, so movement is fairly simple. You activate a unit and move it. Either it's movement stat or declare that you're moving cautiously and move half of your movement stat if you want to disengage from an enemy, move through difficult terrain, or across a linear obstacle. Um, there are some abilities in the game that different characters have that allow you to do something extra during your activation, like sprint. So some of the characters will have the sprint ability. I don't think anybody here on the table has sprint, no. But sprint allows you to move an extra amount of distance based on what your sprint stat might be or the sprint special ability. Um, so say for example, if this character did have, let's say he had sprint three, okay? So he can move eight inches, which brings him to about here. Then declare that he's going to use his sprint ability. Many abilities do cost stamina and we'll talk about those later on. And in this case, his sprint ability is three, so he can move an extra three inches. So movement's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Everybody has a movement stat. It's halved if you wanna uh, move through difficult terrain or across an obstacle or disengage from the enemy. And some abilities uh, that are used during the activation, uh, activation phase will allow you to either move for further or you know, maybe attack somebody at the end of your move, like the charge ability. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. There are no special rules for moving into and out of buildings. In fact, there's none in the rule book about moving in and out of buildings or fighting from, uh, you know, in buildings, etc. So the movement mechanics are fairly straightforward, very, very simple. Some of the models will have uh, abilities that can be used during that model's activation that allows them to move other models. And those models obviously move in the same fashion, you know, using their stats and, and cautious movement. And those will be models that have a leadership ability. And this Genta Handler has Beast Handler, which allows him to activate up to two friendly beasts. Now these Grishak are both beasts. Each model in the game has a model type, I guess you could call it. And the Grishaks are beasts, and the Genta Handler's uh, Beast Handler ability allows him to activate two beasts within his command range. And this Genta Handler has a six inch command range. So let's say for example, we had these guys here, and we just check, make sure, yeah, okay, cool. And we draw out a token, wonderful. It is my Genta Handler's token. I'm gonna activate him. I'm gonna use his Beast Handler's ability to activate these two Grishak as well, as long as they're within six inches of his command range. They are, this first one's gonna move cautiously into this wood here. They have a, a movement distance of 10 inches, so that's halved, and he'll move five inches up here. This one wants to get all the way across the board over here for some reason. So he's gonna move 10 inches over here. Then the Genta Handler is gonna move his distance of eight up to here. He has a leap ability of four, which allows him to move an additional four inches and move him to there. Now, for those Twilight people who are playing, they'll know that that leap ability costs points of stamina. And I'll talk about stamina later on, but that would normally cost him one point of stamina to do that move. So you can see that the movement is fairly straightforward. It's fairly simple. 
There are, like I said when I was looking at the rule book or reviewing the rule book, the mechanics of the game are pretty straightforward. But you know, it's the complexities of all these different abilities on the cards that gives the game real flavour and you know, tactical nuance where you know, it, the game can change depending on what the situation requires and whether or not your characters in those situations have the abilities to influence what's happening. Um, so there we go, that's movement. It's pretty straightforward. Everybody has a movement stat, they move. When a counter is drawn out of the bag, if they have a leadership ability, they might be able to activate other models around them. And then if they need to move through difficult terrain or they want to disengage from an enemy, then you need to move cautiously, which is half of your stat. That's it. That's movement, or well, activation, I guess, and movement for Twilight. Let me have a think about how I'm going to set up the next one, and we'll come back soon. See you later.